The Engineering Council of South Africa, EXA, is a statutory body established in terms of the Engineering Profession Act, EPA, 46 of 2000. This is a body established in terms of the Engineering Professions Act. It's a statutory body. It's Act number 46 of 2000. The council is made of 50 people sourced from various quarters of our society. 30 of them come from the profession, 10 come from the state, and other 10 come from the public. And that's what makes up the Engineering Council of South Africa. X's primary role is the regulation of the engineering profession in terms of this act. Its core functions are the accreditation of engineering programs at institutions of higher learning, registration of persons as professionals, and the regulation of the practice of registered persons. The organizational support services that fall under the office of the CEO for which I am responsible include um, legal services, human resources management, quality management services, and council governance and administration. The HR business unit is responsible for ensuring that there are adequate, appropriate, and robust care and growth systems and processes that support the business. One of the important aspects of HR is around recognizing that individuals are individuals. We subscribe to one professional organization that looks at everything that the individual may be needing. That needs professional intervention that we do not necessarily have in the form of line managers. The legal business unit is responsible for ensuring that EXA complies with national and international legal prescripts. This business unit um, provides services in two major areas. We provide internal services, for example, your contract drafting, your contract negotiations, provision around the drafting of MOUs, um, provision of legal services to enable the business to do what it's supposed to be doing. The other leg links back to the core business processes, primarily around the investigation of professional um, misconduct. We also support the legal aspects of the international accords. The Council Governance and Administration Business Unit is responsible for all the necessary support to Council to enable it to fulfill its mandate in terms of the relevant legislations. The Quality Management Systems Business Unit is responsible for ensuring that there is a customer service orientation culture in the organization through standardized processes and systems. Our ultimate goal is to inculcate a culture of customer service orientation and continuous improvement. The Engineering Profession Act, Section 18, Subsection 1, empowers EXA to register persons under the following categories. EXA look at two stages of re registration. Stage one is your educational requirements, and stage two is your competency requirements. For stage one, we look at the base qualification of the engineer to determine at which level the candidate may apply for registration. For stage two, the applicant must demonstrate his competency. He must submit a portfolio of evidence of his training and experience. He must have at least a minimum of three years of experience and he must address each one of our 11 competency outcomes. EXA's regulatory division looks at three aspects of the engineering profession. We look at education, we look at registration, and we look at uh, continuing professional development, CPD as it's known. We accredit um, programs at higher education institutions, and we look at the evaluation of non-accredited qualifications also leading to the registration of professionals. For registration, we assess the competency of engineers to determine whether they are competent to carry out engineering work at the various levels of engineering. There is an organization called International Engineering Alliance that we are a member of, and that organization oversees accords, which are basically educational frameworks through which we compare the education qualifications that we get from our universities with their own jurisdiction universities. There are two areas of comparability uh, that we deal with in relation to the IEA. The ones are for education programs where we are members of the Washington Accord 
for university degrees, whether they're comparable to their own university degrees as well. The other one is Sydney Accord for technologies, and then the other one is an educational accord for, called a Dublin Accord for technicians. By the way, there is another one that we are a member of. It's called World Federation of Engineering Organizations, abbreviated as WUFIO. It's primarily established to influence the United Nations on matters of engineering as they relate to sustainable development goals of the United Nations. These countries came together and said, insofar as engineering is concerned, how does it impact on the SDGs that the UN is following? But they also have continental and regional bodies. There's a FAO, which stands for Federation of African Engineering Organization, and there's SAFIO, Southern African Federation of Engineering Organization. In SAFIO, we play quite a significant role, again, to promote the mobility of our engineers. It's structured more like SADC, African Union, and then we've got the United Nations worldwide. So we follow the same pattern. We assist these countries to be on par with us in terms of their education standards as well as professional registration standards. Hence, we want them to be affiliated with the International Engineering Organization from SADC. That enables our engineers then to move around the SADC sphere to operate within similar regulatory frameworks. Also. And South Africa is playing the secretary role, we are a beacon of hope in this environment, and want to bring along our neighboring countries, our brothers and sisters. We have different turnaround times for the different categories that we register in. So these turnaround times are for good applications where all information submitted is adequate for processing. However, if additional information is required, um, application turnaround times will be longer. The division has two units. The first unit is the strategy unit, which is responsible for the development of the organizational strategy as a whole. The unit is also responsible for the production of the annual performance plan as well as the operations plans. The next unit, which is the marketing and uh, stakeholder relations unit, it is through this unit where we market all the activities of this organization and most importantly engage stakeholders, be it in public as well as private sector. We have got a program called Ingenious and through this program we visit primary as well as secondary schools to promote engineering in general. Of critical importance is also to encourage our students to consider maths and science as some of their subjects because it is through these subjects where they can be able to make a career within engineering. On average, this program reaches just above 20,000 learners per annum. The financial division consists of two distinct functions. One relates to financial services that talks to financial management as well as budgeting process and supply chain management, which in the main provides the logistical support throughout the organization. The compliance with PFMA brings about changes in the manner in which we do things in the sense that we have to recognize that we use public funds. Whatever we do will be subject to public scrutiny in the form of our accountability toward the Department of Public Works as well as the National Treasury. In addition to that, we will now be accounting to the Portfolio Committee that is responsible for the Department of Public Works. In the recent past, we've seen year-on-year -year growth in the head count of the registered persons that translates into increase in revenue. We are sitting with comfortable reserves now that I can pronounce that ESA is financially sustainable. There's quite a number of benefits that one can enjoy by being a registered person. You are privileged to perform the work that relates to infrastructure development. Most of the corporate organizations in our country that have a duty or responsibility to lay down their public infrastructure, they rely on EXA to provide them with registered persons. You look at any tender, they'll say a person who designs that role must be registered with EXA. It's a prestigious profession. We are not confined to the borders of South Africa to do or practice engineering work. We can go elsewhere. All of these relate to whether you are registered with EXA or not.
RPS is a critical component of EXA's business because as EXA we cannot be able to regulate the profession, not unless we have conducted the research, not unless we have got policies that are in place to use to, to regulate the profession, and not unless we have got standards that are going to be used then to regulate the profession. We have got the Council for the Built Environment legislation of 2000. We have got the promotion of access to Information Act as well as PAJA, which is the promotion of Administrative Justice Act. Those are the pieces of legislation which give effect to the work that we do, which we are using to regulate the profession and our business. We have come up with a 2015-2020 a strategic plan, which has given effect to the transformation implementation plan in terms of which we ensure that the people that we utilize to do our services, which is education, registration and CPD, are people that are representative of the demographics of the country as a way to ensure that we are aligned with the agenda of government to drive the agenda of transformation. EXA conducts business from its head office in Johannesburg, Gauteng province, as well as from its satellite offices around the country. service provider to carry out a survey on the efficacy and efficiency of that strategy. Are we meeting the objects that we wanted to meet? Are we doing things in the correct way that we wanted to do them? Of course, we've got some comments on that. There are other instruments that we are looking at that have been looking at excess function. Going forward, therefore, we'll be developing the 2021-2025 strategy, and we will take our learnings from what came out of those surveys. One of them uh, relates to the relationship between EXA and the voluntary associations, the societies of knowledge on engineering matters. We feel that there is a room for improvement in that area and we'll be putting quite a great deal of emphasis to improve in that area. The Engineering Council of South Africa continues with its mandate of accreditation, registration and regulation of the engineering sector today and beyond with hope to improve the lives of the citizens of our rainbow nation. The Engineering Council of South Africa, engineering excellence, transforming the nation.